Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Winchhaven series, a collection of 92 parishes in the southeastern corner of Worcestershire. There's some beauties here. Where are we today? Welcome everybody to Worcestershire for the very first time. We are in the district of Winchhaven. That surprised me. I had to look up how to pronounce the name of this district. And apparently, according to the internet, it is Winchhaven. It doesn't have an N in it though, which is weird. Which, I mean, yeah, we would have thought Whitehaven or Wichhaven. Wichhaven, yeah. Or Wickhaven even. Mm -hmm. Anyway, whatever it's called, you can't get the name of this village wrong. Welcome to the beautiful Child's Wickham. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Worcestershire, everyone. This is Child's Wickham, a beautiful village situated within the flat, open landscape of the Vale of Evesham, close to the foot of the Cotswold Plateau. Child's Wickham is located one mile to the northwest of the much larger and much more touristy Broadway, just off the A44. It's also right on the border with Gloucestershire, a fact which was important in 1931 because it used to be in Gloucestershire. However, going back much further, Charles Wickham was once in the short-lived county of Winchcombeshire in the 11th century. Its history can be traced back to Roman times. Coins and pottery have been found here as the old Roman road from Worcester to London once came through the village. By the 17th century, Charles Wickham was owned by the Sheldon family. Many properties here date from that time. In the 19th century, it came into the possession of the Atkinson family, and that's why one of the main roads here is Atkinson Street. Speaking of names, here child means son of a nobleman, wick means a clearing in the woods, and ham means hamlet. It's sometimes written as two words, but officially it's only one. There's some great landmarks here, but the spire of St Mary's Church is by far and away Child's Wickham's best feature. And let's not forget Murcott either, a small hamlet which is also within the boundaries. Let's go for a walk folks! Our journey around Child's Wickham starts at the parish notice board on Buckland Road. If you're new here, I leave a card on these to mark off that I've visited. The first landmark here is a pub. This is the Victorian Child's Wickham Inn and Brasserie, quite the popular watering hole according to some reviews. I think that's partly because it stands on the corner of Broadway Road, which offers some lovely unspoilt views. Well, we are in the Cotswolds after all. Off Broadway Road is this play area on Blacksmith's Lane. Its official name is the Frank Lamley Playing Field. Lamley was one of the men of Charles Wickham who fought in World War I. Blacksmith's Lane runs into a small triangle of grass. There's a few of these in the village. We're now heading along New Street. This, along with Atkinson Street, which we'll see later, is part of Charles Wickham's main through route. Broadway Road acts almost like a village bypass. 
Now you might have already guessed from my accent that I don't come from Worcestershire. We are in Worcestershire for the first time. We come from Yorkshire, if yeah. you're new watching this channel. And uh, one thing that we uh, one thing we, we find a lot of in Yorkshire are old red phone boxes. And uh, there's another, oh, don't worry. <laughs> there's, an, uh, there's one here in Charles Wickham. Now let's go and see what's in this, because normally we find things like defib machines and book exchanges in these. This one looks like it's a book exchange. New county maybe, but phone boxes in Worcestershire are still used in practically the same way as we're used to. This is the Village Book Exchange. Not far away is the old post office which dates from the 17th century. It's one of the oldest buildings in Childs Wickham. There's no post office here anymore though. Ambling along New Street, we come back to the small green where we started. We've completed a small circle, but there's way more to come yet. Turning left onto Buckland Road, you'll come to this building. This is the House of the Open Door, a registered charity which has been going since 1997. The charity was founded to support the Christian activities of the community. Its primary purpose is to advance the Christian faith for public benefit. It has a chapel which is its main religious focus, but there's also a retreat centre located within the 17th century Childs Wickham House. I've linked their website below. Okay, so next we're walking down the side of the beck, and uh, Nikki has already noticed there's plenty of snowdrops around. They are definitely a sign of spring. We are seeing them all well, over the place at the daffodils, moment. Very early daffodils. Yeah, there there's too. some daffodils there as well. So we'll follow the beck for a short way. The next major landmark is the church. Now let's follow the brook. This footpath might look a bit nondescript, but you would be very wrong. This is Brook Street, which used to be Childs Wickham's main road. There are no properties here now, but both sides of the brook were lined with houses. You simply cannot imagine that fact now. There's an information board here which tells you all about Brook Street and some of the finds which have been made in the area. There's a lot of Roman coins. All of the finds listed on the board were found in Manor Orchard. That's the piece of land you can see over the brook. They're now on permanent display at the Village Hall. At the end of the path, we take a right turn onto Farmer's Lane. We're now entering the boundaries of the Childs Wickham Conservation Area, designated in 1969. It's not hard to see why it exists either. This is the oldest and most historic part of the village with some gorgeous properties and some awesome landmarks. So Nikki's found a cross. Here we are, a cross on this little green here. Topped with an urn. Any plaques on it, Nikki? No, nothing, okay. So uh, it's gonna be down to research on the internet then to find out what this one's all about. The stone's been well worn away. The stone's been worn away. I wonder what was there then, in a previous life. Childs Wickham's cross dates from the 16th century. Most of the buildings surrounding it are later, mostly 18th century. Not far away there's an old mill. Literally called the Old Mill, this was once a water mill and was presumably powered by the brook. Its old water wheel still exists as well. Now we're at the stunningly beautiful Church of St Mary, which has a very tall spire. It's so big that it can be seen from several miles away. St Mary's is the earliest surviving building from the medieval period of the development of the village, dating back as far as the 13th century. It does have some 12th century remains too, suggesting an earlier church once stood here. We were intrigued here as to why there would be a rope from the spire to the ground. We were to get an answer to that pretty quickly. The church was open, so we went inside for a look around, and we were not on our own for long. All right, so here we are then inside the church. This is cavernous. This is uh, bigger than it looks, I'll promise you that. Let's head up. Sorry? Currently, it appeals to save this 
fire. Ah, that might be what that line's all about then leading towards the tree, possibly. Who knows? Okay, so let's head in towards the chancel first and see what's in here. We've got a lovely tiled floor again. We've seen plenty of these, haven't we? So that's something, <laughs> I suppose. Nice bit of stained glass here. And in the window to the right. It's a bit glary in here. <laughs> One of these letters is commemorative to Commemorative to what? Given by the people of Childs Wickham to commemorate the Silver Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, 2nd of June 1977. I will be a little bit picky because it should say Queen Elizabeth II, shouldn't it? Um, but there we go. <laughs> Let's uh, head this way. What's this little room, Nicky? Right. Some interesting things on the wall. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we are not alone. We are about to be joined. It's really beautiful. It I is. And there's the gallery up there, which we can't access. You see there's a spiral staircase in the corner, but you can't actually get up there. There's no public access. No. So, And the only other thing I did notice on the wall was the war memorial. I'll just take you across to that. Here we go. There it is. So the guy who's just walked in is the treasurer of the church, apparently. And uh, in typical fashion, Nicky is speaking to him. <laughs> Nicky likes to talk to people. So it turns out that the people that walked into the church behind us, one was the treasurer and the other one was the verger. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Tim and Sandra, I think their names were. And they told us all about this spire and why there's that line that runs from the top all the way to the bottom of uh, that tree. It's to get ladders up there and you can see there is a ladder on the spire and uh, it's for some repairs because there's a massive crack in that spire which yeah. they're trying desperately to, to repair. Reason. And they're after, was it 23,000 pounds? 23,000 pounds, but you know, what we'll do is in the description, there's a sort code and account number. If you've got a pound or two to spare, chuck it their way, it would help restore this church. The church has suffered massively since COVID, the congregation's dropped and there's not as many people coming in and out now. So anything that these, I mean, I've already donated inside the church, but anything you can give, to help and support and fix this gorgeous church. Let's see what we can do to help. I think they've already got 13,000 pounds, so they're not far away. But yeah. They're trying their best to save the uh, spire before it gets damaged any, any, any further. further. Any donation though is very, very welcome. Okay, yeah. we're gonna have a look around the uh, church yard, or rather Nikki's going to do that. In the meantime, I'm heading through this gate because over here, there's a moated site, which I need to talk about next. To the south of the church, there's a vast expanse of medieval earthworks and a moated site. These have been interpreted by local historians as the site of a medieval manor house. These paddocks include platforms and hollowways, which also suggest a shrunken or deserted village. There are gullies, pits and post holes, which have been identified as post-medieval to modern. These shots don't cover the whole site, it stretches for quite a way to the east and to the west. Whilst I was doing that, Nicky had a little look around the churchyard. There were a few interesting headstones, and there's a couple of war graves in here as well. A footpath then takes us over the brook again, and now we're onto Vicarage Lane. That house there is the old vicarage. No surprises there. Twitchams Lane. This is a good example of infilling. It's off Atkinson Street, and this is where the level of older, much more gorgeous property is about to go up a notch. Right, we've now turned the corner onto Atkinson Street. And the first words out of Nikki's mouth when we turned the corner were... Oh wow, some gorgeous buildings on here. Oh wow, there's some gorgeous buildings on here. And have a look at them. Thatch Cottage on one side and Thatch Cottage on the other side. That's I've... Not that's oh no, sorry, that's my eyes. It's like a medieval house. Yeah, but it's still a, it's still a nice cottage, isn't it? 
bit, and the, a bit of winky wonky window <laughs> the village hall is down here as well which is where that collection of coins we learned about earlier earlier are on display Childs Wickham's earliest buildings are timber framed with wattle and daub and Cotswold limestone. Atkinson House, seen here, is a fabulous example. Almost next door is the Memorial Hall, which unfortunately wasn't open. We were hoping to have seen the collection of coins that were found at Manor Orchard. Never mind though. We continued on via a short footpath to Chapel Lane, and even though you won't find a chapel on here these days, you will find another board. This one tells us about the former Ebenezer Chapel, which once stood where we are right now. It's since been demolished and turned into a grassy area with a community seat. It was a congregational chapel, and it was built in 1843. Meetings were held at it twice a month. Chapel cottages alongside it also serve as a reminder of this area's past. At the other end of Chapel Lane, we're reunited with Broadway Road, albeit much further along its length. Now for the long walk back to the pub. Okay, so we've hit Broadway Road again, and we're just gonna follow this all the way back to the pub, which we saw earlier. And uh, that's Charles Wickham Dunn. Got a nice little walk around, haven't we? Yeah, I've loved it. We've seen some nice properties and some uh, even nicer people here as well. Yeah. Clearly, people in Worcestershire are uh, top notch. Friendly, aren't they? <laughs> Friend Definitely. Friendly, yeah. We We've seen, a, we've seen quite a few people here who have wanted to talk to us and, and uh, find, find out. out find out what we're doing. Mm. And uh, yeah, we will be back, of course, to Worcestershire and to Winchhaven to uh, do a lot more of this district. But of course, we are moving on at this time to uh, Gloucestershire next. But we will be back, I promise you. This series will continue. So let's head back up then to uh, the pub. And then when we get there, I've just got one little thing left to do here, and that's head up towards Mercot, which is a small village just to the sort of north of Charles Wickham, which falls within its boundaries. I don't think there's much there, but we'll soon see. So this is Mercot, which is a lot smaller than Charles Wickham. It's basically just a linear settlement, which is on a dead end. That's the dead end up there. There's some uh, pretty good views out that way, but I couldn't park up there because there was a van that wanted to turn around. Uh, but even so, down here, you still get a really good view across some of the Cotswolds. You can see them in the distance over there. I'm on a bridleway here, which runs past this little stream, which has a, a bit of water in it. So what I'm going to do to end this video is I'm going to put the camera on the dashboard. I'm going to drive through Mercot. Like I said, it's a linear place. There's not really much here. And uh, yeah, we'll head towards the next one from this point. So I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Charles Wickham, and I'm out. I couldn't find a great deal about Mercot other than it was once spelt in a couple of different ways, one using an I instead of a U, and one using two T's on the end as opposed to one. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoy this little drive through the hamlet. We will be back to Worcestershire very soon, and if this has been anything to go by, it's going to be great. See you next time, folks.